Hello, my name is Drunk Dave. Right there, it's Marco Derpa. Hello. And Obesius Adam Rodriguez. Hello. Today's beer is a Terrapin Hop Secutioner. It is a delicious IPA. Have you guys ever had this? I have not. Maybe. Well, this is the One Beer in Podcast. <laughs> Ready? Imbibe. Oh, it's good. Good lord. It's very <clears> good. <throat> <laughs> Marcus throwing up. Oh, God. IPA, gross. Mm. Oh, yeah, I like it. It's a strong six out of six. Yeah? <laughs> Bottle caps. This is one of my favorite beers. Mm. Let me get another taste here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very ipa I love IPAs. <clears throat> I Epos. I'm just going to call them Epos. <laughs> All right. Whatever makes you happy. Because <laughs> this beer makes me happy. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I like it. I'm not, I'm not uh, jumping out of the window for it. <laughs> really? You should? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. Should I? Should I jump right out the window? You should just get out. Not for it. Just jump mm -hmm. out the window. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, that's good. It's getting better with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's the, the beauty of it. It's what alcohol does. The next one you drink, it's going to be the best beer you ever have. Mm. So what do you guys give it? Um, You know, after after having the first sip, I can tell I have had it before. It's familiar to me. I would give it a strong five. I'm going to go with a four and a half. Ooh. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. Neither does yeah, Marco. Like you said, uh, you can, <laughs> Four and a half is still a good score. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very good. Out of six. That's very good. Like you said, it's one of those beers you kind of recognize the taste. Mm -hmm. from. So yeah, if I was in a bar and someone bought me this, I would be able to like tell what identify. It was. Yeah, without knowing what they got. Right, right, right. Uh, getting right into it, mm -hmm. Adam. Did you want to? Oh sure. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard about the How I Met Your Mother scandal, about the finale that a lot of people were butthurt about completely. Yeah, or, or do we want to give a spoiler alert? Uh, yeah, let's do a spoiler alert. Um, okay. Right. <laughs> uh, so none of us really super got into How I Met Your Mother. I was super into like the first couple seasons yeah. and then it just became the same formula each mm -hmm. season where it's, you know, Mosby meets a chick, breaks his heart, recovers, Mosby meets a chick, gets an artifact of of the relationship, like the blue trumpet and the yellow mm -hmm. umbrella. And those were the main ones, but uh, it just became just a cycle. Mm -hmm. And I, I got bored of it. It was good, like, like humor or whatever, but. Like you said, the sitcom thing got to me where you could hear the fake laugh track. Yeah, the laugh track killed that. me. But yeah, all right. But I mean, that, that doesn't really bother me about sitcoms, the laugh track. Mm. <clears throat> I get that they need to, you know, they need to have that to tell people when to laugh, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I, that never really bothered me about sitcoms. What bothered me about How I Met Your Mother was, we've talked about this, yeah. was <laughs> fucking Ted Mosby. <laughs> Him as a, Ted that Mosby. character, I just can't stand it. Mm. We'll talk about it later. What okay. did you want to specifically get into? The, right. The, the, uh, the, main the finale topic. itself? Oh, well, no, no, no. I, I was going to touch on that, but in order to touch on that, I kind of have to spoil things for it. Yeah. So we're all familiar with basically the main characters of it. You know, we, have, we know how the show goes, basically, without having seen the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, so apparently... That's bad. That's how formulaic it is. Oh, I mean, it's a sitcom. That's what you go very for. True, very true. It's those same formula. Those same characters. Um, but anyway, my main topic of that was that people are upset because of the way it ended. Uh, they thought that, uh, well, he ends up with Robin in the end. He's ended up with Robin multiple times. It's kind of annoying. Right, right. But they made it yeah. so that he ends up um, apparently marrying that girl, the new girl that he found sure. that everybody was thinking was going to be his, you know, his wife, the mother. Right. So... 
in a twist that a lot of people called, they get married, they live happily ever after, sort of, but then she ends up dying. Yeah. So apparently they gloss over that fact pretty quickly in the finale. Mm -hmm. And people are upset at that because a lot of people ended up liking that character. Yeah. Um, So she dies, apparently, and he ends up being with Robin in the end when they're old and... Wait, what? So... Robin dies or the mother no, no, no. dies? The mom dies and then after so what the he's telling a story and then it's revealed that he's telling a story to his kids because they asked him to. It's like, you know, six years have passed since the mom has died, and they've asked him to tell the story, and then after the story's done, That's, they ask him to give it another shot, to give romance another shot, uh more uh specifically to give his love with Ro- uh, Robin another shot. How old are so, his kids by now? They're the they're same They're the age. same age. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he just takes advice. So the from finale teenagers. was um, the finale was the that that aspect of the finale had been filmed already, like nine um, years ago. They wow. had already filmed it. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The story was set in stone before they even did right. so the they, first season. Nine basically. season, nine years. They knew where they already knew where they were going. That's bad. So that's horrible, right? So it's kind of like they had a a beginning, they had an end, and then they just filled it in. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not very good writing. They, they knew where they wanted to end up. And the, right. like the way you tell it, it's just like they were like, "Well, here's a twist. Wait, oh, twist, another twist. Right. right. Well, that's how they. Oh, that's, think the twists are over. Nope. Mm-hmm. Twist. From what I've seen, that's kind of how it happened. Just the episode was just kind of lightning fast. Right. They gloss over the death of the mom. They gloss over the divorce of Barney and uh, Robin, and then just kind of come to this this. Not neat little bow of an ending, no, sort that's of bullshit, man. Because that shit doesn't happen at all. Like, there's no like nothing is realistic about that. How many times did they get back together? And like in the seasons that wow. I watched, it was it was stupid. Well, okay. So here's the thing: it wasn't universally hated. That's the thing. It, it seemed to be more divisive with people, where mm. some people enjoyed it, where other people hated it. And I think that it's just it's mixed up between the people that really wanted to see Ted and Robin get together. Um, I think Marco would have liked to see Ted shot. Yeah, if yeah. anyone was gonna die, I wish it was Ted. <laughs> Just that's the final. <laughs> if scene. a character was gonna die, yeah, <laughs> like he's the... done telling the story, and then he has like a heart attack, yeah. like, right <laughs> there on the couch. <laughs> he just <laughs> drops dead. <laughs> he's telling the kids the story. He goes, and that's how I met your mother. Suddenly, front door gets kicked in. <laughs> it's a bank. <laughs> it's a robber. Shotgun blast to the face. Right. <laughs> In he front goes of his down, kids. The blood splatters all over the kids, and that's the that's the frame you see is the the. How I Met Your Mother, like, yeah, just that. <laughs> just, just blood splatter. And then... Uh, that would have been the best. And the theme twist, song comes twist. in. Twist. Robert takes his mask off. It's Barney. <laughs> <laughs> twist. Oh, man. I wish. We could only wish. Yeah. But anyway, uh, to get to my point, because that's not even my point, it's that... Holy shit. What is your point? I'm wow. getting to it slowly. I'm getting to it slowly. Uh, but anyway, so my main point is that a lot of people have been so butthurt about it. The people that hate the ending, which, I mean, understandably hate the ending. And I'm getting to the point as twists. <laughs> I know. I thought he got to the point and then twist. That's I, not the point. I'm the M. Night Shyamalan of podcasts. Ugh. And then this story is going to be horrible. It's very bad. <laughs> yeah. Very bad. You're all ghosts. Uh, We're all dead. Yeah. So by the end of my story, you'll be. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. So, so and that's how Adam told the story. Kids. <laughs> they died of old age. <laughs> so, anyway, my main point is that people are so upset at this that they are calling for a rewrite. They want to have a different ending to be filmed. It's and a sitcom. I know. Calm down. It's a sitcom. Yeah, I know, and I, I, I get this. But let me, let me finish. So, people feel so strongly about this sitcom, the show that they've you know dedicated their evenings to for. <sighs> however many years and I get that they're so upset about the fact that it didn't end the way they wanted it to right because that's disappointing but to me I'm of the stance that that's the way they wanted to write the show that's what they had intended for the show leave it be that's their prerogative to make the show that they wanted to Mm -hmm. whether it's shitty or not that's not your call you're not the writer you know I understand if you're upset about it and you can write as many blogs as you want about how disappointed Mm -hmm. you are in it but At the end of the day, asking them to rewrite it is not your call. Right, really. It's never it's never the fans' call. And I don't understand why uh, fans think they have that right. They I don't think you have that right. It's been done before. Mass Effect three had a rewrite. And that's that's the main other example that I thought of was that, that when backlash. When I heard about that, it just dis- it disappointed me a lot. 
have you played Mass Effect? No, I'm not talking about the ending itself. I'm talking about if they wrote something and they believed mm-hmm. in it, and then the fans didn't, and they went back and rewrote it, like that's disappointing. Okay, well, as as an artistic expression, if you put something mm-hmm. out and you say this is how I intended it to be, and then people who are fans of your product go, no, we don't like that. We want it this way. You're right. Why don't I go back and change it? That's that's going against everything that makes you an artist. I don't. I, I don't. I, I don't appreciate it. I, get I don't where you're respect coming it. From. I get where you're coming from. It's not about respect, you know. Yeah. It's it's you make stuff for the fans, but you also make it for yourself. Like this is what you believe in. This right. is what I believe in. If you don't if you don't accept it, mm-hmm. that's unfortunate because I need fans. But <laughs> at the same time, it's like this is how I wanted it. Right. This is how I intended it to be. Well, that's that's staying true to your artistic uh, direction, really, your vision. Uh, but you know, go, actually, going back to the Mass Effect thing, they actually didn't rewrite the ending; they just added more to it to give it more of a satisfying conclusion. But what did they gain from that? The game was already out. Yeah, and people already reacted to it. I, I think they felt a little bad about people being so upset. You know, uh, just they wanted to please their fans so much that they took out the extra time and money. I'm sure. Yeah. To dedicate to you know make these cinematics to add this extra element to it that wasn't there that mm-hmm. the fans were obviously upset about so i mean i commend them for that actually i i, I would be of your same thinking if they completely rewrote it and you know basically made it a fanfic uh just to appease some loud minority but uh they That's didn't racist man yeah. <laughs> it's not even, what i meant <laughs> even if it's the, i don't know even if it was the entire fan base that didn't like the ending that i put mm-hmm. out I mean, this is that's how I intended the characters to to go mm-hmm. and to to finish their story. Right. I mean, it's my creation. Like yeah. I thought of it. This is how I thought it should have went. This is the road it should have went mm-hmm. on. And you know, I mean, you're they, along for the ride. As a fan, you're along for the ride. You right. know, you're in the back seat. I, you know, fucking back yeah. seat drivers are terrible. They're terrible. I, I mean, don't need it, someone dictating the direction. I can see how how you would be upset because very much, uh, you write music. It's very much more more intimate when you write something from from your mind your heart Mm -hmm. and i you correct on that part because i can't imagine anybody going uh kanye's album sucks let's get him to rewrite it right Mm -hmm. right you know uh but at the same time it's it's more than just music you know like like you said people are putting every uh night every week week to uh to dedicate this a half an hour of their life and over the, the span of what nine seasons yeah that accumulates to a lot yeah. and suddenly you end it with you know something that could have just been done in the first season that yeah. logically makes sense like why would they go back and forth so long through nine years when they could have just stay together the first you know work through your problems right well like they could have just they could have had it end in like the third or fourth season you know just right. reveal it and then have them get back together then we didn't have them get back together six or seven times this is going back to how i met your mother <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly where it's going. Yeah, right. well, yeah, yeah they, but, I mean, they don't have, they didn't have to do all that. But, you know? but like, wait, wait, Marco, 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 money, money, right? Yeah, they, they need the money. That's really. But see, that's that's what I feel like. Those like a, a a rewrite of something. That's all you're trying to do is appease people and 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 make people happy. Which well, I mean, that's part of why you do things. Right, and that's part right. of why you put stuff out. So I guess I could see that instance. But I mean, you put all this this time and energy into something. This, this, blood sweat and tears into something and then people don't like it and mm-hmm. then your first reaction is to like appease those people that would make me angry my first reaction yeah. would be like fuck off i'm not changing <laughs> this well, that's but, the- but what 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 i was thinking was i get why if you have a certain direction that you've gone in for nine years mm-hmm. and then in the ninth year and the the ninth month of the ninth year of the you know what i'm saying like right, right at the end Last you minute. change directions that i could see why people would have such vitriol vitriol and be angry at right but I mean, if it goes along with the theme of the show, which that ending sounds like it does, yeah, and, you and know, even if it was kind of fast, it still kind of sounds like it right. goes along with the way the show has always been. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just because you didn't like it doesn't mean they got to go get, back and you know. I get, yeah, okay, again, I'm agreeing with you because Mass Effect had a huge build up at the end of two, huge. Thing. Oh yeah, three was just going to be somehow even better than mm-hmm. two. Because and, I, I remember at two or when I was beating two, uh-huh. I was. I was up to like five, six in the morning because I knew I was close. I was like, "Oh, gotta finish it! I gotta finish this!" And yep. <laughs> my, parents, my parents woke up and they're like, "What the shit?" <laughs> like they're getting ready for work, and I'm just there, like, "I gotta finish this." <laughs> and um, 
uh yeah like that was a, an incredible ending like i i got very many feels from it mm-hmm. and then i haven't i haven't beaten three yet but i can imagine okay. like just a, a huge letdown at the end of it right well be pissed but the same like there wasn't i don't think there was a build-up like marco said that ending makes perfect sense in the how i met your mother universe i think people built it up in their own hearts because they had sat through nine years of basically the same stuff over and over again. Whose fault is that? I stopped after season four. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's true. See, <laughs> what, what the problem is people, they dedicate their lives to something and then they feel like they're a part of it Yeah, because well, they've been such fans. The thing is, though, like I understand the other side of this, right? Because we're, we're all saying that, you know, it's basically the artistic uh, vision in order for you to, to keep with that, mm-hmm. with however you envision this from the start, your storytelling. And that shouldn't be dictated by the peanut gallery, right? But I get the other side of that, where people feel like I bought into this. This is this is part of me. Your creation, whether you, you know, made it for yourself or not, which most of the time entertainment is not made for one the creator of it. It's made for other people to enjoy, right? You feel like you own a piece of that, a piece of that story, a piece of that character, or the, a piece of that music, you know. <laughs> People, so, I think people, they're giving that like a sitcom too much credit. Like, yeah, yeah it's a TV show, but it's it's a sitcom. It's not yeah. a, a cop drama. It's not you know. Right. People wanted some kind of critically acclaimed. Like, like it's not like know. it's not like it's Breaking Bad or Mad Men or right. Sopranos. It's it's How I Met Your Mother. It's a sitcom with right. a laugh track. Well, see, how but that's, seriously, are you going to take more, that? Yeah, but more people. I I think it's because the How I Met Your Mother characters and sitcom characters as a whole are more relatable than drama characters characters are because. They are caricatures of real people. Right. You know, each person is, this is the laughing guy. This is the yeah. spooky it's, chick. It's this is the blah, blah, blah. Right. So people, probably someone you know. <laughs> right. They're, they relate to it more. So that's why people have more invested in it. What I was going to say is I feel like fans misconstrue their dedication with what they fit, like rights that they feel that they've earned because mm-hmm. they are so dedicated to a show. Yeah. You don't get more rights the longer you're dedicated to something i don't care if you've read the the manga you've watched the anime you've seen the show you know who the voice <laughs> actors are how i met your mother <laughs> right. Right. Anime. Right. how i met your it doesn't oh, it doesn't son. give you rights it doesn't give you rights okay uh-huh. you're a viewer you're a fan you're someone on the outside you're in you're in the audience right you don't get more rights you don't you're not allowed just because you've gone to the play Mm-hmm. 50 times doesn't mean you get to come on stage and go you know what guys Ooh. i don't like the way you're doing it tonight we're Ooh. gonna do you know what i'm saying like you don't get those rights right. just because you're dedicated preach you know what i'm saying <laughs> just, preach like people Hallelujah. people kill me with with what th- this this entitlement that they feel yeah. like they deserve when they dedicate themselves to something we didn't get that way with breaking bad because it was a perfect show <laughs> but if it ended, we got lucky <laughs> we did basically but if it ended in a shitty way I would be upset because I would go, you know, that's not the way I wanted it to end. Mm-hmm. But I would accept it because that was Vince Gilligan's vision of the show. Right. You know, I don't get to go. No, I don't like that. He needs to change it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the way I wanted it. Dear Vince Gilligan. Right. It's not. Who <laughs> Rewrite, you, please. It's because we, you know, we got the Internet and we got these blogs and we can write petitions. And we shit. all have voices now. That's it's, the thing, and it's so. bullshit. That's what it is. Right. And your voice is probably the same voice as someone else. And if. If you get enough people with the same voice, they'll change it. But right. that doesn't, like you said, it doesn't mean you should change it. Right. Mm-hmm. But, right. Um, exactly. Fine. Like this. Uh, I think you just changed my stance. <laughs> like I was like, all right, yeah, they should change shitty endings. Yeah. But no. Uh, fuck that. Well, like people, you like a petition now. You can you can go online and you can write a petition and have a bunch of people sign it, and then the White House is obligated to respond if you get enough signatures. Mm-hmm. The entitlement that that gives uh, to normal human beings, <laughs> it's crazy. It's just I don't, it, you know, that's, just that's, I just that's don't how like the government's it. Supposed to no, work? but no, <laughs> by the people. What? I, what? I, what I, I get <laughs> that, but it, it it just makes it gives people this this power that we first make, of all with we the, can government, make the government do anything. We're gonna make the shitty TV the, show do whatever we want. The government, we want. the government is not gonna change anything just because you get twenty thousand signatures. So I don't know why people even sign those fucking. Things. They'll write you a letter and say go fuck off exactly yeah, and then so you'll, you'll get more spam yourself. from that petition right website, exactly right? it's just gonna like, keep we, we yes. almost won let's do it again so then you know you don't get that so you can go on a blog and you can post your opinion right. and then get it reblogged and go on twitter and get it retweeted mm-hmm. and people just jump all over it yeah. and it becomes this huge thing and it's like you know people just 
I just, I don't know. They, they, they kill me with that. Yeah, I, it's a double-edged sword, though, because I, I do like the internet age and its ability for the every man to be able to, you know, voice his opinion. That's what we're doing right now, mm-hmm. you know? So let's not uh, say that that's such a horrible thing in concept, but, you know, I, no, I get what yeah. you're saying. I'm not, I'm not saying that the, the rights that have been afforded people, are, I, you know, we take them for granted, but, you know, I appreciate them, obviously. We're, we're exercising all of them right now yeah. with how we are using the internet. There's a gun in my pocket. <laughs> right now it's loaded <laughs> my right to bear arms off. it's just when people take it too far yeah and when they don't use it for right for the right reasons like going back to the petition thing i didn't mean kill petitions right what i meant was when people go we don't like justin bieber so we're gonna get a petition to send him back to canada right. that's a waste of resources yeah that's stupid that's why people don't take Thing serious exactly, on the internet. Exactly. Because when they do shit like that, peti- those petitions don't mean anything anymore. Nope. You can get hundreds of thousands of people on Twitter to jump on this petition and sign it. Why? Why would you waste those resources when there's so many more important things mm-hmm. to do? So not don't go away, don't get away with petitions. Do away with stupid ass right. petitions like right. that. There's, That's what I'm saying. There's wars going on. Exactly. There's people <laughs> dying right now, and we're talking about, you know. This, we need to get Justin Bieber out of America. What difference does that make yeah. anyway? He can sign still this, make music. Sign this petition to get food in Syria. Mm-mm. No, <laughs> that'll Justin get, Bieber. That'll get like two hundred. Yeah. That'll get like two hundred signatures. Double that click, Justin Bieber share. Shit, that would break the fucking internet. And it and it, that's what irritates me is people like that. So of course they'll sign a petition for How I Met Your Mother. Mm-hmm. But you know anything that's like that's, important. That, this this goes way back. To all the internet activists. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely. The, the Coney thing that nobody talks about anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything embarrassed else. about it. Right. Uh, yeah. What else? What else was a. Uh... Well, the most oh, recent the SOPA. thing is the. Sopa. Yeah. Sopa, yeah. which, which passed, but that's okay. Drop the ball on that. Well, one. It, it, a, a version of it passed. Yeah. That, that net neutrality. Just... <laughs> which is <laughs> another topic. It's, just so, about. it's so <laughs> funny that we all just kind of like, well, okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. We lost. Um, right. But the most recent one which is the. Which is exactly. Uh, an opposite reason of why people don't take take things serious on the internet. Mm-hmm. You lose something and you go, uh, oh well. <laughs> well, because the first the, here's the, the next thing. The SOPA what's, thing. What's the next thing popular? So, SOPA the act itself went viral, so everyone knew about it. Right. When they rewrote it, called it something else, and then kind of slid it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No one cared because no one took the time to research. No, it. because it was like I I thought we stopped this. I already, right. I already exactly. positioned this. Exactly. I'm not sign I put one. my effort into that. Okay, I'm not doing that again. Hey, you're asking way too much. You want me to 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 post that on my Facebook I again? My, pros, my profile <laughs> pic and everything. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that again. Relax, oh, okay. okay. I'm guilty of it too. I did the same thing, so I'm not even gonna. Yeah, I yeah. can't shit on people for that. <laughs> I did it. I jumped on, and then when it got actually, in my defense, I knew about the rewrite, and I talked about it, but nobody really gave a shit about it. Which is <clears> it <throat> just proves. Our yeah, point. yeah, that's it. Yeah, it does. I I tried, but people were like, "That's not SOPA." Well, it's kind of the same thing. It's not. It doesn't have a cool name like Sopa, so I don't give a shit. It's not soup. <laughs> but it's not the soup. What I was saying is like the most recent thing is the cancel Colbert thing. Have you, oh. did, you, did you see that? No. What is that? Oh, Why would you want to cancel Colbert? Are these Republicans? I don't even want to no, talk it's, it's, about uh, this. But Ugh. but it, it goes along with what we're talking about. These yeah. internet activists. These these hashtag activists. Yeah. People like that. Please. It makes me, me. It makes me so angry. I will enlighten you. Okay. So Colbert had a bit. He was you know agreeing with. You know, we talked about it before. Dan Snyder and the and the um, Redskins thing. Right, our last our last podcast. <laughs> yeah. actually. right, right. So Dan Snyder has the org- the uh, the the charity organization for for Indians for Native Americans. Um, people saw through this. Colbert saw through it immediately. So he started a a uh, organization. It was called the the Ching Chong Ding Dong Center for like Oriental Rights or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But yep. obviously, okay, ching, the Ching Chong Ding Dong thing is like a, a, a bit he's been using right. for like 10 years now. So it's, I mean, if you're a fan, it's already established like this is a joke. I mean, if you know the show, you already know mm-hmm. that it's satire and, you know, you know right. where he's going for right. with it. So he posts the, uh, he does the, he does the bit. <clears throat> no one really, I mean, it's funny. It's a funny bit. Everyone gets what he's trying to say with it is like, it's so ridiculous that Dan Snyder would come up with this organization call it the Redskins thing, still go by Redskins, even though that's what people are upset about. Like, that's the, you know, that was the point of the bit. Like, uh, right. everyone who watched it understood it. I got it's, it immediately. It's a slap in the face. Right. That's what yeah. he's saying. Exactly. Right. So that's why he did the, the Like, the I, I don't watch Colbert like that, but I got it. You get it. So, so this funny. happens. He put, he, the, the show airs three days later, right? It's like mm-hmm. three or four days later. 
the Colbert Twitter account, not Stephen Colbert himself. He has his own Twitter account, but the Colbert account from Comedy Central posts just the joke itself, not explaining the joke, no context to the joke. So all that the tweet said was um, to the Asian community, I'm going to start the Ching Chong Ding Dong uh, Center, Center for, for Orientals or whatever. So that's all the, the tweet said. There was no link for the, for the bit mm -hmm. or anything, no context. And then Twitter took that and just went nuts because they thought he was being like, just flat out racist, mm -hmm. and yeah. So then there's the guy, the the chick, Suey Park or Park Suey. What's her name? Suey Park. Suey Park. Suey Park. She's the one that really started this. Yeah, she jumped on the most. On the she's the one. She? She's a she's an activist online. She's a feminist and an activist, uh, mostly within the Twitter sphere. She, yeah, that's where she reigns, basically. She right. Finds things. So to, did you ever? Feminist? Yeah, she's a feminist. She hot. She, she kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, hit that. I hit that. I hope you're listening, Chop Suey. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> do we do C we? continue? So, okay. <laughs> this is all satirical. I'm going in with the uh, with the Colbert with the theme thing. of this. Yeah. All right. If of, nobody of course, gets that, of course. Um, so she she was the one who started the uh, "Not Your Asian Sidekick" hashtag, where she's basically talking about. The, uh, the 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 way that that Asian Americans and Asians in general are portrayed in media, TV shows, and and just uh, uh, media overall, just the way that Asian Americans are Asian portrayed. Asian sidekick. Only Asian sidekick I could think of is Green Hornet. Yeah. Well, that's kind of that was the the the, the basis the of crux. it. Um, you take that and then you kind of apply it to the way Asians are portrayed. Sulu and everything. I mean, Isn't I don't really. Sidekick? I think he's just kind of part of a team. I don't right, really think so too. Like a part side of a team. team. Who else is an Asian sidekick? I don't know. I mean, you know, some people just need stuff to rail against, man. You know. I think her point's that there's there, not a lot of uh, starring Asians. Right. There's not a lot of Asian representation in uh, Western media. I get that. I get what I get. What she's saying. Right. And a lot of people jumped on. So she was the one who started that. So she started this. She started the cancel Colbert hashtag, and a lot of people jumped on without looking at the context, without doing their research. And that's pretty much what we're saying: is people will do that. They'll they'll latch on to something without doing that. that's that's the this age popular? that we're living. Oh yeah, this it was popular? dude. It was huge. I'm yeah. latching on the cancel the cancel Colbert thing was uh, trending for like two days straight. Really? It was like top yeah. five trending, and that's yeah. How exactly. happy do you think he was? <laughs> Oh, he loved they're it. Just, they're just proving his point. Yeah, he uh, he responded in in a in just a hilarious way. It just, just looks like Colbert would. Yeah, exactly. But it's just it's just the fact that people. That's what people do, man. That's that's how they. That's how our generation operates. It's they, the internet they, knee jerk reaction, right? That they we always see get something, and they just need something to jump on. So it goes back to what you're saying, Coney thing, Sopa. So, to just kind of recap, uh, back to the uh, how I met your mother thing what's your what's your weighing opinion do you think uh, asking for a rewrite is okay or would you be okay with the rewrite does, does anybody even care about how i met your mother no not at all that, that, <laughs> that i mean that was my point was that we don't we don't care about it we care about the principle exactly that, that yeah. was my my entire point it's, in bringing it, this up right it's 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 really the 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 entitlement of fans that that irks me and then mm -hmm. just i can't i can't let i can't get over it right it just it'll it'll bother me to no end just the way that people, the way people um, view things, the way people <clears throat> uh, digest things now, as far as like media and mm -hmm. how, like just how they take things in and 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 just you know feel like they own it now. Right. You know, to really bring this to a head, you know, you don't own it. No one really owns it. At at it's kind of just out there for everyone to enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, you don't enjoy it. But it's not yours to decide what direction mm -hmm. it goes in. You know, okay. the people who wrote it. They decide what direction it goes, and they put it out there for people, and then they don't even own it once they put it out. No one owns it anymore, so mm -hmm. you don't. No one has that right to say this is what it should be anymore. I agree with what you're saying, Marco, but I also see it from the other end of it too. Uh, and I know a lot of people, a lot of creative people, that would say that it actually does belong in the fans once it goes out. Yeah. So I mean, uh, I, I see it from both sides, but I think that asking for a rewrite is asking too much from the creator of whatever thing you're enjoying, honestly. Yeah. You know, if they screwed up the ending, it's on them. If you didn't like it, that's fine. You move on. Mm -hmm. You can be upset about it. You can write all your nasty reviews about it, but asking them to redo their vision is childish right. to me and pointless. So, Right. Word. Yeah. Switching gears. Switching beers. Yeah. Next up on our one beer in uh, 
uh, beer review is the Shock Top Shock Top Winter Combo. That wasn't a stutter. That's what it's called. <laughs> uh, comes in a six pack uh, of two different beers, three each in the six pack. That I can do it. I can. I can. Yeah, he can math. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you're supposed to layer it on top. So you pour out the chocolate wheat, and then you pour on the uh, original uh, Belgian wheat chalk top. Uh, I tried it. Didn't really work out. Uh, <laughs> so I think we're just going to stick with the chocolate wheat. Can we just, like, stone cold stern of them? Just crack them together and just, like, throw them broken down glass. our throats? Like, <laughs> yeah. Just drink just a broken like, glass. It like, hurts so good. Yeah, that actually be kind of cool. Can I get on the top I'm, turnbuckle and I just kinda, can put I try people it? off? Would you do that. mind? Yes, do it. Ladies and gentlemen, he's, he's doing them both like Stone Cold Steve Austin style, but with bottles. Very timidly. Jesus, this is good. The it's chocolate, chocolate one? wheat tastes like really chocolate. Good. Like, all right, uh, <laughs> tastes like chocolate. No, no, no. I mean, they say that like Young's Double didn't taste like this. These snozberries taste like snozberries. This is very much not like a craft beer's drink. Drink. Mm. You can very much taste the chocolate. Well, here we go. Yay! Wow. Yeah. Right. It's nice. I could smell the chocolate as I put yeah. it to my lips. It's cool. You know, I like it. I don't think chocolate or a taste of chocolate that strong belongs in beer. Six mm. out of six. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Classic Marco. Mm. But oh, with that said, it's I am a fan. Still delicious. Like, if you love chocolate, it's just cool. I really do love chocolate. Mm. And, uh,. I feel like it's a it's a beer for the masses. I think a lot exactly. of people would be happy with that. Yeah, you, you wouldn't give like a chocolate stuff to someone and have this kind of reaction. This is like um that blueberry, uh, the what is that? I'm just talking about. You know what I'm talking about with the, oh, the, with the uh, bulldog. The, the, there's two. No, there's not two the sea dog. The sea dog, and then there's wild dog. I want to say wild dog, but I don't think it's it. All right, we'll we'll do research after this. Right, but, but it's like that right. very blueberry taste, mm-hmm. like not even a. Like a subtle hint yeah, of yeah. it. It's, it's too much for me. Very blueberry. That, that blueberry. Uh, blueberry. So if you're into that, that's delicious. Right. Same goes for this. If you like chocolate, this beer tastes like chocolate. Yeah, this <laughs> this is a uh, this is going down smooth. <laughs> well, Marco's into it. I'm gonna give this. Uh, you know, what? I'll, I have to think about it. I'll give it a five out of six. Five. I'm going <laughs> a very strong three. I don't think there's such thing as strong. Yeah, the, the strong three is average. Yeah, that's, well, no, you no, can't no. be a strongly average person. You can, you can, because <laughs> no, no, because if I you're like, I am a strongly average person. I'm very strong. Look at these all features. My these are qualities. strong, very average, average. <laughs> extremely average. I have an extremely average beard, and look at my glasses. Very, <laughs> very average. <laughs> so average. Yeah, uh, but no, uh, you can be a strong average. You can be a strong three. Because if agree. you're a weak three, you see a hot chick, you're like. Damn, that girl's average. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let me explain. Let me let me give yeah. my point. Let me give my point on this. What I'm saying is, if it was a weak three, I'd be teetering on three and two. If it's a strong three, I'm teetering on three and four. So then it'd be a three and a half. No. You can't no, no, be no. a strong three, but not a three and a half, but strong, close to a four. A strong three is just a solid three. Right. Yeah. You can't be like So you can't halfway. be teetering to four, because if you're teetering to four, you're That's at three, three and five. a half. Yeah. 3.25 then, if you guys want to be technical. So if you guys want to be technical about it. 3.25. I was trying about, to avoid that. I'm about a uh, 1 <laughs> Sure. Whatever, man. I'm about a uh, 4 and a half twelfths. Listen, <laughs> guys, you're making me rewrite my review. Yeah. I don't appreciate that. Rewrite it. Very good. The fans so very clever. The fans are against it. The fans want to rewrite. You guys can hate all you want. Call back. I'm holding it on my strong three. Mm-hmm. 3.25 if you're really pushing. I'm going on the record as saying there's no such thing as a strong three. Okay. All right. You just isn't. You're literally splitting like, splitting hairs. Yeah, splitting you, hairs. You split a split hair. Well, you're not literally splitting. <laughs> Figuratively, <laughs> literally splitting hairs. I could be. This is radio. Dave? I'm getting four. Okay. Solid is it a- four. It's a solid <laughs> it's four. It's a solid four. It is four. not. You cannot move this four. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah. All right. So... This is good. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I'm not as a craft drinker. I'm not crazy about it, but mm-hmm. you know, just something to drink. It's tasty. The more I, the I, more I drink see, it, it's a bit. I can't see a girl not liking it. So. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a bit too sweet now. That the, the more I drink it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why they gave you the original. Yeah. Maybe maybe, maybe that that probably helps a lot. Yeah. Cause... So do that. Mix them in. Yeah. And then we can we can uh, we can taste test that. Bam. It, 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 
pretty good. It it take it <clears throat> it retains the. I, I see what you're saying. It dulls down the chocolate yeah. sweetness to a drinkable, right. enjoyable level. Keeps it keeps this at a five. That's what it does. Really? Yeah. All right. I, yeah. Okay. I'll I'll agree with you with the uh, the chocolate wheat alone as a solid four, with the shot top mixed in in equal portions. Mm-hmm. I will give it a four five. <laughs> it is uh, noticeably better. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a that was smart that they did that. They knew what they were getting into when they put that together. Yeah, they even they even put it on there. Like, wouldn't that look cool if your glass was half <laughs> half and half? You know, I bet they know. they made the chocolate weed and they were like, "Fuck, this is way too chocolate." Guys. We got all this chocolate weed left over. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw the original shit in there. It'll be fine. Spitter genius. <laughs> guys with the overalls in the factory. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming up with these genius ideas. Oh man. Mm. Anyway, I so, respect uh, it. I- I'm keeping my three. You keep it three. I'm keeping three. Right. I, I like it. I, I think it was honestly made for people that don't normally drink beer. So you know, uh, and I think Shock, Shock Top is pretty much one of those middle of the road type beers anyway. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, if you don't drink Bud or Coronas mm-hmm. or whatever the right. hell regular people drink, it's around there with drinking, like you drinking Shock. Yeah, it's around there with like Land Shark and stuff like people. that. I'd say. So you know, if if you really don't like the beer taste, you would go with just the chocolate one. Yeah. Uh, and if you're looking at experiment, this is a little bit, good, you have all... like date night at home. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking, actually. Yeah, because yeah. it's got one for the dudes, got one for the chickies. Hey, yep, some, some chickies like that beer too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so now we switch gears. We switch gears. So Microsoft has unveiled their equivalent of Siri and Google Now, mm-hmm. and it has been named Cortana. Yes, yeah. I've heard about that. Yep, I have not. I so need to be informed. It uh, it apparently it's it's something about to, I'm about to get pretty technical. Do Not it. pretty technical, kind of technical. So it's got all the functionality and, yeah. and uh, features of Google Now and Siri, but the one thing that it has that uh, one ups those uh, what what would you even call it? Uh, voice command applications, voice mm-hmm. command apps. Sure. For uh, future references, that's sure. what we're going with. For vo- those voice command apps, uh, <laughs> is that it's able to integrate with apps other apps in your phone Ooh. so now you say google now it does everything within google apps you know like right. um, whatever so now if you say uh okay cortana show me calories for a banana and this is the example they gave um it shows you the calories for a banana and then you can say okay integrate that into my health fitness say i ate it mm-hmm. so now it takes that information and puts it into another application that you would normally have to open up, type in the information, yeah. and then you would have to manually save it yourself. So wow. it does that automatically by itself. And that's yeah. just one feature that it has. Um, but this is their their uh, their kind of... Uh, competition? Competition into Siri and into Google Now. Yeah. Uh, um, Microsoft phones aren't really... Well, I, I would say here in Florida. I haven't seen that many. Most are predominantly Android and iPhone. Yes. Um, I don't, I literally only know one person who had one, and then he got a Nexus Five, and he completely forgot about it because he fell in love with the Nexus Five. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, what do you guys? Um, I have you, a question. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Marco. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Romero, I have a question. Um, yeah, take your hat off in my class. <laughs> okay. Sorry. He, he's Professor Romero. <laughs> Professor Thank Romero. Uh, uh, um, okay. The, the integration with the with all the apps um, is it is it the fact that uh, they're all like Windows apps that they can integrate or would would no. this apply to yeah, like App Store anybody who wants to make an app that can like uh, be compatible and and integrate with Cortana can make it so they have uh-huh. the dev kits already out for mm-hmm. developers to make right. features in their apps to upgrade right so they would have use. to just integrate that into right. their app when they build it right. So, oh, so cool. right now, like if I open Google now and I was like, "Hey, uh, Google, open Instagram." That's still Google in it in my own OS, right? Opening an application, but you could take, um, you could, you might be able to be like, "Okay, okay, uh, Cortana, take a picture and then photo uh, and then post it to Instagram." Yeah, and it would do that for you, right? Which is completely, it's it's another step, right? Into a just complete voice command right. over right. over right. everything. Which is what video games uh, consoles are trying to now. Right, really. right. Which makes sense that Microsoft would, would integrate this, this into their mobile yeah, devices. Exactly. They probably mm-hmm. took the, the Kinect uh, mm-hmm. technology and went, we could throw this in a phone. Mm-hmm. Right. Boom. 
Yeah. And, and it's cool that they named it Cortana. It's a, it's a callback to Halo. If, and if nobody right. knows who's listening, who is um, Master Chief's con- or digital companion. Mm-hmm. A little hologram. So, uh, Does it have the same voice as Cortana too? I don't know. I didn't actually watch a demo of it. That would be awesome. It That's would a be. good question. That yeah. would be neat though. Yeah. I kind of want that. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not mad at that. Um, so that's so, their competition. Another thing that I wanted to touch on was um, a very cool feature from HTC. HTC has fired shots at Samsung saying that their products, HTC products, are very quality products. That mm-hmm. if you want something less quality, you can go ahead and buy Samsung's plastics. Mm. Damn! Uh, but Damn. HTC one, we got metal cases on our phones. Right? <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah. So their products are very much quality. To sh- prove how much quality they, they have, they came out with this, uh, I believe it's a dot view case, which is very cool. If you, you have to see the demo of it for, for you to get the whole grasp of it. Basically what it is, it's a flat case, mm-hmm. uh, very much like the, the uh, Galaxy cases. Mm-hmm. But on it, it's just a dot matrix of just what looks like a half tone art, kind of like old school comic books. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's just dots. Yeah. Okay. So on that, the case is fully integrated with the phone. So it's part of the phone. Or it's mm-hmm. not part of the phone. You can buy it and it becomes like an extension of the phone. So on that case, you don't even have to flap it open. You can double tap it. So because it has the dots, it shows a display that is a dot matrix of the time, the weather, whether you have an incoming call, mm. whether you have an outgoing call. Or like basic notifications, basic stuff like that. notifications, which is very cool because you don't need to flap it open uh-huh. you just have to double tap it like i need to show you this for you to see it yeah um but it's very cool it, it becomes part of the phone and that's very much something that not really anybody else has done samsung's done it but you need um it's it's just a, a window case and yeah. in that you can see it you mm-hmm. can see the phone screen but this is a full case on the screen of the phone that you just double tap and it becomes sort of like a like a half tone art yeah it's very cool um I need to show you. Yeah. If we could pause this real quick. All right. So I showed them. And just so I don't sound crazy because I'm talking about a phone case, uh, what are your initial reactions, guys? That was really cool. It was awesome. Such a cool case. Right. So you guys saw, like, uh, the case becomes part of the phone. You don't even have to open it to answer calls, Mm -hmm. to check notifications. You double tap on it. Saves battery. Right. Uh, it's it's just a cool thing to show your friends. It's one of those things that's very, like it's neat, and it it's applicable too mm-hmm. because uh, it's a very cool feature. No other phone has that. <clears throat> and then you know you're actually seeing if you have notifications. You yeah. might I don't know if you can read text messages on it, but you can at least see if you have a text message on it. Right. 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 So that's a cool thing with it. The thing I'm seeing with that is I think it's it's one of those steps that we're getting to that. It's sort of the other generation of cell phones now, where we're getting a lot of the uh, the wearable tech and all that, yeah. which is all made to, as ridiculous as it sounds, is make using your cell phone even easier. Right. So, like, I don't have to whip out my phone anymore. I can just look at my watch, and I'll see if I have a notification or if somebody's right. calling. So, so we can go on to that. What do you guys think? Have you guys seen the, uh, yeah. the Google Wear? Yeah, I was just about to say, I'm not into, I'm not yeah. into wearing tech. No, the wearable tech. I'm not into it. I'm not into Google Glass. I'm not into the... Google Gear, or I'm sorry, um, Galaxy, uh, Gear. Galaxy Gear, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and then the, they have the iPhone watches. Have you seen the nope. concept for that? It's it looks kind of like um, just the rubber bands that, that people used to wear that had like like the Livestrong rubber bands, right, right. but it had about. information yeah, yeah, yeah. on it. Yeah. That's, I don't think that's from it. Apple. I think that's Nike. You sure? I you might be right. Think. You might be right. They've done things like that in the past. Don't quote me on that. Okay. But you just yeah, be recording on it. You don't, you're not down with the wearable. I'm not. Tech? I'm not. I don't like wearable tech. Have you seen Google's Wear? Like, have you seen it? All right. So a lot of times, uh, like Samsung or the Galaxy Gear and Pebble, uh, the wearable text, they come right. on with this disgusting square metal frame, and it's hideous. I'm like, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't look like a normal watch. Yeah. Where like you have a watch on right now. It's circle. It's got a circle face. It's got a you know this this thing here to adjust the time. I don't know what the technical name for that is. So your watch <laughs> is what Google is trying to make their wearable tech look like. Mm-hmm. So it's not a big ass square. It's just a like it's thick, obviously, because it's got so much in it. But it's a circle face, and it's got a circle screen on it, mm-hmm. and the frame is circle, and it just looks like a normal watch. Yeah. So that's something that Google is trying to co- or will come out with. I think maybe that has a lot to do with why I'm not into 
wearable tech because it's so god awful right now. It's, it's just looking. so ugly. Well, yeah, we're we're going into like the first gen of all right. the companies coming out with something. We're at the, the era of the uh, '80s giant phone. Right, right they're, now they're but that's, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. But I think that that step in 2014, that step should be skipped. You know, like mm-hmm. with yeah, I think just the way that things are processed, the way that things are made. I mean, there's yearly iterations of of phones that the technology steps by leaps and bounds sometimes uh-huh. by the year. And yet, when they come out with a first gen thing, we have to deal with, you know, well, you know, here's the bugs and blah blah blah. It's like it's bullshit. Why do I still have to deal with bugs and a sloppy design just because it's first gen? Well, because yeah. that's how they sell things. Like, yeah, they could probably make an amazing watch right now that's flat and thin and has a huge capacity for whatever you want to do with it. But uh-huh. what's what's the incentive to make the next one? That's very true. It's not only that though. Like I. I hear what you're saying, but I feel like that's a, a big sort of conspiracy theorist type thing of they just want to hold back some technology so they can release something next year, which is a big claim from Apple. You don't think so? I, th- I, I think, think that's I think that's, that's partially that's a huge claim. Like, I th- wait, I think that's partially the truth. But <laughs> you can go into this all day. I think that's partially the truth, but at the same time, I think it's also a, a cost decision because I think the technology exists to make the tech smaller. Right. But how much are you going to shell out for a uh, you know a cell phone uh, watch? Right. I mean, I understand companies need to first see like, all right, what is the selling on this? Like, how many people are actually going to buy this? Right. Not me. Not Marco. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then like, okay, now that we've got people buying it, how can we make this better to get other people to buy? It? Because mm-hmm. like, let's say I buy it. I buy the first Google Wear. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a watch and then i show marco i show all the things that it can do and suddenly marco's like well that's pretty cool Mm -hmm. and then the next google wear comes out and it's thinner Mm -hmm. it doesn't look like a big ass circle block on my hand and it it looks nice it looks like a regular watch right they might have just sold it to marco Mm -hmm. because they saw me with it marco got first hand uh uh, experience with it i would say that you sold it more than the company did you know? That's what they're betting on, but, though. Yeah, that's exactly what they're betting mm-hmm. on. Just like I sold you that that case just now. Yeah, but that was sleek and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess once the watch gets to a exactly. point where it's a beautiful so, watch, and, and like you haven't seen a big, bulky like those Otter boxes, Otter box cases. Never bought one. Exactly. They're terrible. Probably, but you've seen the slim, nice, feature-filled case of the M or the One M Eight, right? Mm-hmm. So now you think that's cool. Yeah. That's the same better thing than the box. Like so but, yeah. Google come out with a big ass watch. Google comes out next year with a thin, sleek watch. It right. Looks like a watch. Yeah, I just, I, I still kind of feel like, um, well, I still don't get the point of wearable tech yet. You know, I get. No, I don't. I still, <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. Okay, well, imagine being like at work, right? Your boss is like, no phones. I don't want to see you on your cell phone. Well, all right. <laughs> Let's check out the time. Check out the time. <laughs> But I mean, once we get to a point where we all are wearing tech, mm-hmm. then that's no when... watches. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody's no, late forever. No, no wearable tech. <laughs> you just got they're gonna force people to wear regular watches. And are those glasses Google Glass? Take them off. Get yeah. the fuck out. I can't of see office. anything though. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, people who wear watches, myself included, I think are like it's kind of like uh, going against, like, I'm not going to check my phone. That's why I bought this watch. Like <laughs> it's very, uh, it's, it's, I could see it in a few years becoming very hipster. Yeah. yeah. Like, then, Ooh, look at this guy. He's wearing a watch. Well, like <laughs> the old school, like Casio digital ones already are. Yeah. Uh, like people the, G, those. the G-Shocks. Yeah. Those are very popular too. Oh yeah. I have a couple of G-Shocks. I know. But... You hipster. Kill mm-hmm. yourself. Scum. Can look at you. Go back to you jumping out the window. Ah, oh, man. You guys so angry. <laughs> <laughs> Such anger. Feel wow. The hatred. <laughs> All that heat. But no, uh, I mean it's a, it's a good point. That okay, the let me first... just. Do you, would you wear wearable tech? Like, if you had, if you were like a loyal Samsung user, would you, you know, bundle with the the Galaxy Gear and everything? Would you do it right now? Would you, if they offered it to you today, would you wear the no. the Google Wear? Wait, or, I'll, or the, offer the... it to me, or do I gotta buy it? Well, I mean, you gotta buy it. Okay. I'm, I'm saying if they bundled it with the, I'm not saying they just fucking give it to you, just like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just I'm saying you got the phone and they bundled it. You know, it's part of a deal. Okay. Let's um, say you got it for cheaper. You know, I'm saying, okay, let's say they gave it to you. Would Jesus you wear Christ, it? Jesus Christ, get to the point, man. That's why I'm asking. I'm asking, <laughs> would you wear it? Would you wear Would you walk around with that big-ass watch on your own? Would you wear it? Would you wear it? Would you, would you wear, wear it? it? But would I'm saying, would you wear it, though? 
It's not your fault. But really, it's not your fault. Would you wear it? I don't think I would. Mm. I don't think I would right now. No. You wouldn't wear it? No. A Galaxy Gear watch? No. Hell no. Those things are huge and bulky and ugly. I would, I I, wait, wait. Features are I right. would play with it in my house. <laughs> yeah. Show it to all my friends. That's it. And then that's pretty much it. I'd about, it what about Google Glass? Uh, I'd play with that too. If you too. didn't have to pay, spend, what, $1,500 on yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. If you uh, had to spend that much, would you, would you wear those out? No. I wouldn't wear them out. I would. Dave. You know that shit takes a picture with the wink now? <laughs> that's, that's that's so perfect. That is, man. Oh, that is hilariously creepy. <laughs> Ladies, like, wink. Yeah, exactly. Like how how fast would the wink come back? <laughs> oh, it's coming back with like, a vengeance. You, you see a cute chip. Hey, hey, girl. Got you forever. <laughs> shoot, Google shoot the guns. Yeah, that's two pictures right there. <laughs> mm. That's that's strange. I don't like that. And now with the creeper feature. <laughs> with the creeper the feature. And the gun. And, uh, uh. Yeah, I don't I don't like any of that. And I don't, I don't really see a, a trend. I don't see it trending towards me getting it ever. Mm-hmm. Just because, I don't know, just because I don't, I don't like too much shit like that in the first place. Right. You know? Like, I don't even like using my phone to play music. I still use my iPod. Right. Mm. Like, I just, I don't know. I just don't like stuff like that. Well, maybe you know, it's I because like, you have an iPod, so you feel obligated to use that iPod. Yeah. I don't have an iPod, so I, I don't have a problem just being like, well, music on my phone. Oh, yeah, I, oh. I, I stream all my music from my Google. So Yeah, I right. just, I kind of feel like, you know, I don't know. I feel like the device has its place. And I know that there's so many things that the phone can do. And then, like, what else do you do? With, maybe I need more information on. Right. But, yeah, I get I get what you're saying. And uh, I guess it's it's the only place that they can go. Like, it's the next frontier, basically. It's, yeah. the, it's the new innovation. Right. Like, I, I think that's the, the, uh, the first wearable tech was, like, the Nike sneakers. Right. I remember those. Yeah. And those, those fell on their face, though. Kinda. Yeah. Like, nobody, nobody really fucking. Shit. Yeah. It right. just had, like, a, a pedometer. In it. Mm-hmm. And that was it. That's what, mm-hmm. how many steps yeah. you took. Right. Which I think that was a pretty cool idea. Yeah. I, d- I don't see why that didn't catch on. I really I don't understand. Like that seemed like exactly what they were going, where Probably everyone was it, going. It for. wasn't like the year of fitness. Well, and not only that, but like, yeah, people like, are into it now. Not yeah. everybody cares about that. You know, they care now. I guarantee you, if that shit came out today, those that would fucking blow up because everybody is is health conscious and and fit crazy. Right. Which is like I wanted to talk talk about that too. Like everybody is very. Like you said, health conscious. Mm-hmm. Like what's what happened with that? Why did everybody start doing CrossFit and uh, going to the gym? It's not a bad thing. Thanks no, a lot, not. Obama. I know, right? But like, why, <laughs> Michelle? Why, why did that blow Obama. up so bad? I don't know. I don't know what started that. Maybe, I mean, it was. I think it was a gradual thing where it was just like Billy Americans Blanks being started with Billy Blanks. <laughs> then I, intensity came. I, I think it's just uh, us, us being. <laughs> intensity whatever man it's a knockoff <laughs> P- it probably is intensity yeah p80z <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, it's just the the image of americans being so fat and lazy and people like like fighting against that image we're, and they are like, still fat and lazy. oh yeah yeah well, you, you saw uh, the picture i posted of the, the lady falling over in a walmart grabbing oh, a bag of chips so bad american flag so overlaid bad. on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> And I'm proud but we try American. we try uh, we do okay but you're saying like the nutrition things this recent thing but there's always been these fad diets and everybody's always been at one point or another concerned with their weight and nutrition and all this stuff so like i, I don't see it being any different than it was in well, the 80s what, it, what the difference is the internet the difference now is i can post pictures of my progress i can say this is what i'm doing this is what i'm eating right. i'm fit and i can I hashtag this it today blah 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 this much right. time the apps you can do the screen right. grabs of your Tracker. apps and blah 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 so that's really what it is is the internet now gives us the freedom to 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 overshare basically you know what me off? the chicks that take pictures at the gym oh, oh like, yeah. why aren't you working Ugh. out just can can't, you work out something can't you stand pictures. selfies at the gym. The dudes, for that matter, too. Yeah, I'm they're all they're stupid. just as bad. I haven't seen any dudes. Selfies. I've seen I've seen dudes like like just getting it in. Hashtag gym. Hashtag fit. I just I like. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Obviously, to, you're not. Went to the gym to take selfies. I, you went to the gym to take a picture of yourself. If, if someone's like bench pressing and they manage to take a selfie, that's different. Well, good for them. <laughs> right. That's if you bench press with one arm and then the other one's taking the pic, that's. Impressive. That's impressive. Mm-hmm. But it's mostly people who are just like in cut off shirts. They're not sweating because they just got there. And just uh, just right, flexing in the, in the mirror. <laughs> like who is like I like to look in the background of the selfie and see other people going, what the hell are you asshole? doing? 
Just look at this <laughs> fucking guy. Like, yeah, I, I, I can't stand it. Mm. It's, but it's the, it's the culture that we're living in, man. It's the, it's the Overshares generation. It's the, yeah, everywhere. <clears throat> it's like you know, that's just, that's just who we are. That's, that's the, that's the people that we're around. That's, that's how it be, though. That's, that's how it be sometimes, though. You know what I'm saying? It just people don't think it be like it do, but it be. <laughs> and with that. We are the One Beer In Podcast. I am David Romero. Sorry, David Drunk Dave Romero. My name is Mr. Dupa. And I am Obesius. And we'll see you next time.